Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. This video will be the third part of our architectural visualization tutorial series with SketchUp to Illustrator workflow. Be sure to check out our previous tutorials in this series. So far we've covered the ground floor plan and a scenic elevation. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to take a clean, minimalistic site plan to the next level with just a few tricks. Site plan drawings are crucial to represent a project within context, so when setting up the scene, be sure to include the surrounding streets, buildings, and natural elements. We'll take three exports, one PDF for the drawing and two PNGs for the shadows. First, we'll export the drawing. Go to File, Export, and select 2D Graphic. It has a PDF Options window, but we'll leave it as it is. Click Export and your first PDF file will be ready. Then, we'll open Shadows by clicking the Shadows button, which, you can add to the workspace by right-clicking your toolbar and selecting Customize Toolbar. Then you can play with the sliders until you find an angle you like. To export shadows only, you'll need to go to View, Edge Style, and uncheck Edges. Go to View again, this time uncheck the profiles. If you go to the window and select Shadows, you can also play with the color intensity of your shadows. We'll make it very dark for now, since we can adjust its opacity in Illustrator later. To export the shadows, go to File, Export, and select to D-Graphic. We'll export as PNG. Go to PNG Options and make sure to check the transparent background. We'll go ahead and add the shadowed version to our preset scenes. This way, we do not lose our specific shadow settings. We'll get one additional export with the surrounding buildings hidden. That's all we're going to do in SketchUp. Now, We'll quickly edit the last shadows export using Photoshop. We'll open the PNG in Photoshop and clean up the shadows, other than our building. Select the shadows you'll keep with the rectangular marquee tool. Then go to Select, and choose Inverse. Click Delete and surrounding shadows will be removed. To make touch-ups again, select the area with the marquee or lasso tool, and you can color the selected area with the paint bucket tool. We'll crop the image and export as PNG again. Now we can move on to Illustrator. First we will edit the 2D drawing. Since we've exported it from the 3D model, the lines may not look very clean. To fix that, you can select all and go to Strokes panel and choose Round Cap and Round Joint options. This way, lines will look much smoother. We'll set the artboard size to 40 by 30 centimeters to center our building, to the artboard a little more. We'll draw a rectangle to erase the parts outside the artboard with the Shape Builder tool. Then we'll select All, and choose Shape Builder tool from the toolbar. To split the lines, click on them while pressing the Alt key. Once you've split, you can delete them. We'll add new layers three or four will be enough. For starters, we'll move our building to its own layer. Working in different layers allows you to be much more organized. You'll save time. We select the building and drag it to the upper layer on the layers panel. This way, we will be able to edit our building separately. Now, we can work on the background layer. We start by making all the background lines a soft gray tone. In this drawing, we will go for a grayscale and minimal style, but you'd also want to highlight the important parts. One of the pieces of information that should be read in the site plan is the roofs of the surrounding buildings. We'll make their outlines black to make them stand out. You can do this by selecting individual lines and changing their stroke color to black, or by tracing over them with a pen tool, whichever is convenient for you. Don't forget to group the roofs after you've colored them. If you want to make changes later, it will be easier to select. After you finish all, go to Select, Same, and choose Fill and Stroke. While preparing the drawing, zoom out frequently and look at it from afar. It will be useful when deciding on the line weights and level of detail. 
Roof seemed a bit too dominant, so we're lowering their stroke weight. This part is optional, we'll change the sidewalk's stroke color as well. We'll group them and change their color to a darker gray. We'll open a new layer for the roofs as well. We're done with the outlines, now we can work on the fill colors. To color the background, we'll go to Object, Live Paint Make, your Live Paint group is ready. For coloring, we'll just choose white. Then we'll select the Live Paint Bucket tool from the toolbar. To color every surface in a group, you'll need to click the group three times. Now you have your strokes and fills. To edit the Live Paint group, you'll need to expand it and then ungroup it twice. Now that the background is finished, we can adjust the strokes and colors of our building. Again, we want outlines to stand out. For the building, we choose the outlines and increase their stroke weight. We'll use Live Paint tool for the building as well. Now that we have surfaces, we can start adding patterns to our drawing. Again, we will use soft gray tones with low opacity. The level of detail should be chosen according to the scale of the drawing. Before applying the patterns, copy the surfaces and paste them in place. This way your patterns will have background color. While adding patterns, make sure to lower the opacity and zoom out often. Line and dot patterns are the ones you go for in architectural illustrations. Before adding more patterns, we will add trees and adjust the detail density in the drawing accordingly. The level of detail of these top view trees is exactly what we need in our drawing. Also, the names of trees are included. If you want to check them out, links to these collection of trees are in the description box below. We remove the fill colors before use. In this way, we will see the lines under the trees in the drawing. Most of the patterns we use are from Illustrator's own swatches library, but you can always do custom patterns yourself. For example, the scattered leaves of this tree would make a beautiful pattern. We'll duplicate it by dragging it while holding the Alt key, then double click to open isolation mode. We'll select a circle and go to select, same, shape. Yes, it's a thing, you can select the elements with same shape. Now we have selected the scattered circles, we'll go to object, pattern, make, in Edit Pattern Window, we'll choose the Hex by Column Grid Type. You can change other properties of the pattern as well, we'll just rename and save it. Now you have a custom pattern that you can use as grass or ground pattern. Let's see it on action. We copied the surface and pasted it in place. Then selected our custom pattern from Swatches panel. It's looking good, but we need to adjust its scale. You only need the Transform Patterns box to be checked, then you can give a percentage to change the scale of your pattern. And you can see it applied by pressing the Preview box. We'll lower its opacity to match the rest of the drawing. We add color and pattern to the rest of the drawing as well. The right side will be a forested land, we'll add contour lines with pencil tool to give a natural slope effect. You stick to your specific site properties, of course. Once you've finished with the patterns, you can go and add trees. You can add existing trees on the site or do your own landscaping. Try not to put them too close. 
scatter them, so that they do not pile up in one place. Play with their size, rotate them. Create groups and copy them, it's completely up to you. Since we made the right side forested area, we can add a little more detail. We draw a freeform surface and add another layer of pattern. You can also add details such as traffic light or pedestrian crossing. We'll also add a road line with pen tool. Make it a dash line and adjust its weight and dash properties. The drawing part is finished. We can add the shadows on top. We have separate shadow exports for both our building and the surrounding buildings. First, we change its blend mode to multiply, then we'll scale it to fit our building perfectly. Make sure to add site plan elements such as north sign, entrance symbol and scale bar. And lastly, you can add environment shadows. Again choose Multiply Blend Mode, and lower its opacity, you don't want it to overpower your drawing. We crop the image and lower the opacity a little more. And the illustration is done. We think it's look great, what do you think? We'll also prepare a quick Instagram post layout for this landscape format drawing. We'll export it as JPEG. Then add a new artboard from the Edit Artboards panel. Its size will be 30 by 30. Now you can drag and drop your JPEG export to the workspace. Scale and align it to the artboard with the Align tools. It needs a frame. We'll draw a rectangle and that's it. We hope you liked our site plan tutorial. We will continue this series with new architectural representations. Is there any representation style would you like us to try? Feel free to share it with us in the comments. Until next time.